So scaffolding it basically <clears throat> is, is helping them to be able to do something more independently, but helping them when they can't quite do it on their own yet. How do you know what challenges students are going to have, and and how do you think of ways to help them along as they're gaining that new proficiency? Uh, well, it's not that easy for at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, with a lot of decades of experience in the classroom, I know still I get surprised over and over again. I have to plan uh, for all kinds of contingencies. Well, mm -hmm. um, but scaffolding is just offering proper support at the proper time. It's like when you sit very similar to when you teach or support toddler uh, who, who is struggling how to walk um, and you want that toddler to um, be able to you know, make several steps on his or her own. Um, so you might really hold that uh, child very tight at the beginning so that not that necessarily the uh, child may need it, but just to, uh, that they, uh, he or she feels safe. Mm. No, I'm not going to fall. So sometimes the students have to, to get, gain that confidence or think about it. How you like structure things and figure out beginning, middle, end, and how much time everything takes? Again, it depends on the students. Yeah. It depends on how much they know. So say they, they, uh, if, if they encounter the prep pass simple for the first time, then I would probably need more time um, to help them become familiar with the form or, or become confident that they can use the form and even make mistakes doesn't really matter if they can't get it they won't get it right from the start um, but that comfort of, and the uh, willingness to take risks and use that to express their ideas so they might need more time more scaffolded activities to lead them gradually to that. One thing that comes to mind is also that um, oftentimes my timing in the lesson can be determined by the overall uh, what the or how the week look or what the week looks like. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it might be a lesson where it, this might be the first day that uh, students are working with a particular language structure for example or target language and so I know that I'll have more time during the weekend to provide for practice and so uh, my lesson is likely to be more <clears throat> focused on helping them develop more accuracy, more controlled practice in that sense, uh, with the knowledge that later uh, in the week they'll have more time for free practice. So the, the timing itself or the time that I would say assign to each of the lesson stages also depends on where I might be in that week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. One other thing I guess I would add to that is Within each lesson or each day worth of lessons, I'm going to have time dedicated to recycling the old language that they've looked at before. Maybe it was from last week or the week before. We're going to go into our notebooks and quiz each other on that for a little bit. And then at the end of the class, there's going to be some time dedicated towards giving them feedback on what we heard during the day. Um, both really positive aspects of the language we heard and then some maybe errors that we heard. So that they're getting kind of this bookend of, mm. okay, we're going back in time to, to bring these other things back up, but also let's look at what happened today to see where we're at, and this will help kind of decide what the future lessons are going to look like. Okay, so to wrap up, it sounds like we really need to be thinking about who are our students, where are they at, how do we connect with what they already know, and gradually get them to be more and more independent users of the language.